Today I'm going to show you a result that just made me think, damn that's good. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you one of my combined cases using ultrasound with the ultracell machine, some Botox and some dermal fillers and one which I was really pretty chuffed with the result. I thought she had a great outcome. So let's go over to our patient and let's talk you through it. These were her main areas of concern and she called them rather comedically her dog lines. And as a result, I have started calling nasolabial lines the dog lines. She wasn't really too bothered about the rest of it. However, uh, she was kind enough to give me pretty free reign with what I wanted to do. So let's go from the top. You see she's got some volume loss in the temples. The tail of the brow is a little bit lower than the head of the brow. She does have some glabella lines here as well and some bunny lines too. There's a little bit of heaviness in the upper eyelid and some fine lines around the eyes. You can just see the outline of this fat pad as well. So she's lost a bit of volume around the eye, revealing the fat pad. Uh, moving down to the lower face, a bit of a jowl going on here, a bit of volume loss across here. We've got some vertical lines on the lip, just needs a bit of hydration. But overall, really good bone structure, so quite easy to work with. The first thing that I did was use Ultrasal just on the ultrasound setting to try and lift and tighten the skin. As you guys know, if you've seen any of the videos before featuring ultrasound, you're not going to get the final result of this treatment for about four to six months afterwards. Of course, we don't have four to six months to wait, so I'm gonna show you exactly what she looked like straight after she had the procedure done, which is almost exactly the same, but this is normally what you find when you do ultrasound treatments. Even after four to six months, it's not a, oh my God, what have you had done kind of result. It's always very, very subtle. In my opinion, it's worth it for the skin benefits alone. So often people's skin looks more glowing and more hydrated after they've had an energy-based treatment such as ultrasound. Must admit it's not one of my favorite treatments to perform because it is mind-numbingly boring for me. The next thing that I did was use some Botox in the frown lines, the bunny lines, the forehead, crow's feet, and the chin. I then used some Sculptra in the temples. If you've seen any of the previous videos on the channel, you'll know that Sculptra isn't something that I use too often. Nevertheless, I thought, why not? I'm gonna start using it a bit more in the videos. So in this series, we've got, I think, three videos where I'm featuring Sculptra. This was just done with one vial of Sculptra, so ideally, you would put more. But we didn't have time, because the afters are just three weeks after uh, the original treatment session is performed. I then used some Juvederm Voluma into her dog lines. This is not something that I do very often. Uh, and I used half a mil per side. I then used half a mil of Voluma per side along the cheekbone. And then half a mil per side of very small injections in front of the ear. So then at that point we'd used four mils. So let's take a look. Uh, you can see that there's some redness in the, in the dog area there. Um, and we are just starting to get a little bit of lift and a little bit of softness. The next thing is using some Redensity 2 in the tear trough. You guys kept saying that I wasn't doing many tear troughs, so I've made a concerted effort this time to inject more people underneath the eye to make you guys at home happy. How do you feel about that? I actually used a mill per side and I took it right out to the lateral aspect. I then used Juvederm Volbella all along the vermilion border with a needle and in the lower lip with lip tenting. This is in the middle third. I did the upper tubercle coming in from the outside of the lip and I also treated the GK point. I then used Juvederm Vol Lift to the chin crease and the chin point. At that point she'd had eight mils, so let's take a look at her. 
you can see that we've had a really nice improvement in the darkness underneath the eye. Uh, the lips are not too swollen. I think she's looking pretty good. I then used some Juvederm Volbella to the nasolabials. I know this sounds crazy using Juvederm Volbella in the nose to mouth lines, but I was placing it extremely superficially and it was more for hydration because the skin there wasn't very good. I then used TSRE Density 1 to the fine lines of, around the chin. This was one mil. And this is, it's like a mesotherapy product, so it contains additional vitamins and minerals um, to help support the health of the skin. Uh, the idea is that you do more than one treatment session, but again, as you know, uh, we did the after pictures three weeks. And then I used the Juvederm product, which is Juvederm Vol Light to the cheek lines. I really love this Vol Light product. It really does give the skin a lovely, healthy glow almost luminescent. It's a bit of a pain because you have to do more injections with the Vol Light than you do with the Profilo. So from that point of view, not so good, but from the overall result, I'm really happy with it. I then used the TSRE Density 1 to the vertical lines on the cheeks in addition. Let's just have a quick look at her after all that was done. So she's kind of a bit red here and there, a little bit blotchy, but I think we have a nice improvement. And this is her after three weeks. Is it just me? Or am I getting like a Princess Diana vibe here almost? Maybe it's the hair, maybe it's the earrings, I don't know. But there's something about her that says Lady Di. I'm really pleased with the way that the Botox has equalized the eye slightly. This is kind of interesting. So you see this distance here has actually been reduced after she's had the Botox put in. She's got a little bit of brow ptosis, meaning that the brow has come down. I actually prefer it with the brow being a little bit lower. Um, on some people you find that as they age, the brow tends to raise up more and more um, because they're trying to use that muscle to keep their, their eyelids up due to the excess skin whereas you know when you put Botox in sometimes it drops it down but on her I think it looks really well. Um, I'm also really pleased with this here when we did the injections at the lateral part of the eye I feel that really helped to take away some of the tiredness and she's had a great response to the sculpture as well. Loving the lips too so same shape just slightly softer and a bit more pillowy looking. And the overall shape of the face has changed into more of a V shape. So beforehand, it's kind of a little bit squarer, like so. All in all, I am chuffed. Okay guys, so that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section below if you've ever had a brow position change after using Botox and whether you loved it or you hated it. Hope you loved it but I'm also interested to hear if you hated it. Join me again for some more content next week where I'll be talking about more of the same and in the meantime please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you later.